Good morning everyone from Changu, Bali. It is a gorgeous early morning and I'm about to head to a yoga class because of course you have to go to a yoga class when you come to Bali. Now before we even get into this video, I do want to say after being here for a week, I get the hype. I totally understand why people are so crazy about this place. I get why this is a top destination, especially for remote workers, for digital nomads. And even though there's literally tourists everywhere, like it is a very touristy place, it still has a very unique feel about it. My first impression of Bali actually is that it is huge. Like the island is much bigger than I was expecting it to be. And another thing I didn't expect is just how long it takes to get from one part of the island to the other. So where I am right now, Chenggu, it is fairly south. Like when you look at it on a map, you feel like, oh, you know, that's not that far from the airport. Maybe it'll take like 20, 30 minutes to, you know, get from one to the other. No. So if you're thinking of coming to Bali, don't think you can just like hop all around the island in like 15, 20 minutes. That is not the case. But in today's video, I did want to take you guys around specifically Chenggu, the area that I have been staying in, because this is a very popular and convenient area to stay for many reasons. I'll get into that as we kind of go throughout the video. But to begin with, we got a yoga class to get to. Welcome to my yoga studio of choice guys. This is Radiantly Alive in Changu. They also have a location in Ubud, but this was actually recommended to me by my friend Shifa Adriana, who's also a fabulous travel YouTuber here. Uh, definitely check out her channel. What's also really cool about this yoga studio location is that it is in a co-working studio called B-Work. So I think if you were actually staying in Changu for a longer period of time, it would be super convenient to be able to go in between your work hours and sneak in a yoga class. The studio they have here is absolutely gorgeous, super spacious. They have at least three to four classes a day, so there's something for everyone. And I ended up getting a five class pass for about $45 US. Now, after my early morning yoga class, I decided to go grab some breakfast. And friends, when I tell you, Changu has some of the best breakfast restaurants I have ever been to in my life. Like even in Canada, it is not an overstatement. I have said many times what a big fan I am of Eggs Benedict and how is it here in Bali, Indonesia that they do it better than anybody else. <laughs> Well, that was a fantastic way to start off my morning. I'm definitely not somebody who gets up super early on the regular, like eight, nine is considered early for me. But here in Indonesia, the sun has been setting so early in the day, like at 6.30, it's already dark. So I've been trying my best to get up as early as I can so I can actually have some daylight hours. But why I actually chose to stay in Changu to start off my time here in Bali, outside of it being a very interesting, popular area to stay, it's actually because the office of the, trying not to get run over, um, it's because the office of the visa extension company that I used is here in Changu. So not at all sponsored, but if anybody is looking to extend their visa while they're in Bali, there's a company called Bali Visas that has been around for a very long time. They have really good reviews. You can technically extend your visa um, by yourself, but then it would take three different visits to the office and it's just a longer sort of process. 
So because I got to Bali and literally only had a week before my visa expired and I had to be out of the country, I just decided to pay the $100, you know, fee to just have it all done as quickly as possible. One of the top attractions of Chenggu is understandably the beach. Now keep in mind I have been told by locals that the beaches in the very south of the island near Uluwatu area are much better than Chenggu because Chenggu is actually much more popular for surfers. I would recommend being very careful if you're thinking of going into the water to not go too deep, to have people around you because as far as I could tell there wasn't any lifeguards on this beach. It kind of extends for a very long time so it's hard for people to see you. So be very careful if you're thinking of going swimming in deep water here. Another thing that I think is worth mentioning is where to get a sunbed or how to enjoy the beach if you want more than just bringing your own towel and chilling like that. If you want an actual sunbed, you basically have three options. The budget option is just the sunbed itself, usually ran by one or two people with a little desk, you know, set up beside them. That's usually what I would choose. And overall, if you are getting the legit price, it's usually $5 US for the entire day per bed, which is extremely reasonable. The mid-range option, which is also a great deal in the scenario where you're hungry, is that there's a lot of restaurants that are right on the beach where as long as you spend a certain amount, usually $25 is the entry sort of point, you're able to stay in the day bed. For the bougie option, we are of course looking at the beach clubs. The most famous in Chenggu is definitely Finns. It does look really beautiful and I think it would be the place to go, especially in the evening if you're looking for more of a nightclub beach experience. But more or less for a single bed, it's starting at $75. It really depends on the time of day that you go. And if you're getting a booth for a whole bunch of people, it can be up to a thousand. I just got back to my guest house, had a shower, did a little glam, ready for the day. But before I get out there, I actually wanted to go over the price of accommodation for you guys here in Chenggu, because on a whole, it was higher than I was expecting. And once again, I am only talking about this area. There are areas of Bali where you can find things for significantly less, but usually they are kind of in the middle of nowhere, not really on the busy street centers. So using where I'm staying, for example, not sponsored, uh, it's called A7 Guest House. It is on the main road of the city. I'm also like a five minute walk to the beach. This place was a bit of an anomaly um, where I do get my own room. It is more or less a hotel, even though they call it a guest house. And for this place without breakfast, I'm paying about 30 US dollars. On average though, I would say the majority of places are quite a bit more. A place similar to mine on booking.com was usually in the 40 to 50 US dollar range. If you're okay with a hostel, I did see those in the 10 to $20 range. Like if you wanna stay at a much fancier hostel with all the different amenities, then it can be even higher than $20. And then touching on the more fancy sort Sort of stays like the four stars the five stars if you're staying um, somewhere right on the beach for those types of places i would say the average price is at least a hundred dollars bali can definitely be um, an expensive place there are a lot of beautiful uh, luxury hotels that are like the highest standard so a very wide range at the end of the day but i would say that if you're planning to stay right in central changu near a main road near the beach and if you want to stay at a more mid-range sort of place, I would say to budget at least $40-$50. The 
next thing that I want to touch on is transportation in Changu and technically for the majority of Bali this also applies. As you can see there are a lot of scooters on the road and it is overall the easiest way to get around the island because the roads in Bali are very narrow. It's especially difficult for vehicles to get around quickly because they do get stuck in traffic. Uh, the scooters can kind of weave around and make things a lot faster. There's not a lot of public transportation that goes around Bali, so more or less you are confined to using the apps like Grab, Gojek, or hiring the local official taxis, getting a private driver. And those options are what I personally recommend to almost everyone unless you have a motorcycle license and have plenty of experience of driving scooters, motorcycles in Southeast Asia because the majority of the tourists that I see driving on the streets of Bali have no business doing so. If you're not already aware of this, there are so many motorcycle accidents that happen every single day. People die, people get seriously hurt, it is not a joke. And by having so many inexperienced drivers on the road that the experienced locals have to watch out for, it's just a breeding ground for bad things to happen. So unless you are a super experienced driver in Southeast Asia, I urge you not to rent a scooter in the busy parts of Bali. I think it's totally fine if you're more in the north and the traffic isn't that intense, but in the south it is pretty chaotic and you really have to know what you're doing. Now just some last tips that I wanted to share with you guys about staying in Changu and what I think the area is best for. Overall, if you're looking to stay somewhere that has a very city feel, if you're looking for lots of amenities like really fantastic restaurants, boutique shopping, uh, there are a few nightclubs, bars in Changu, this is obviously a place where the younger people uh, go to hang out and stuff so just keep in mind that because you are in a city you can expect that it might be a little bit louder at night. Of course that's not to say that you can find quieter enclaves maybe if you're off of the main roads and there are plenty of things to do uh, like the beach obviously, getting massages which I would highly recommend, so many great massage parlors in Changu uh, as well as any other kind of beauty treatments, there's lots of great places. You can go to yoga, you can go to meditation classes. And also from personal experience while I was in Changu, there are some great clinics to do some dentistry tourism if you live in an expensive country like I do with Canada. I always get my teeth cleaned and checked abroad so for a checkup and a cleaning I paid about $40 at Lumina Aesthetics which has really great ratings. And then I also got my eyes checked and a new pair of glasses at Sunset Eyewear. They have locations all over Bali and they are fantastic. I got an awesome pair of glasses and it was once again I think only $40 and you also get a free eye exam as long as you're buying glasses or contacts. Just keep in mind it's just the basic kind where they check your vision, it's not actually looking inside of your eye, but still you could never get those prices in North America. So for anybody who's interested in that sort of thing I thought I would let you know what I did. And last point I want to make is that if you are looking to explore the north of Bali, like doing any of the volcano trekking or seeing any of the rice fields, I would personally recommend going to Ubud. That's where I am shooting this voiceover from. And it's much better to get the packages from there just because it's going to take you so much longer driving from Changu. And Ubud in and of itself is definitely worth visiting. So. I would recommend going south if you're staying in Changu, go check out the beaches down there, go see Uluwatu Temple, all that kind of stuff. But if you're going north, get your accommodation in Ubud and then just go from there. 
so this brings us to the end of today's video my friends here in lovely Chenggu. yes it is touristy yes it's a bit more expensive than some other parts of the island but i definitely think it's worth it i would a hundred percent come back and if you're a digital nomad that really wants to be in the heart of it all in bali i think Chenggu is where you go now this is just my first video of bali of course i still have so many other areas of the island that i'd like to explore and assuming my visa extension goes through that will hopefully be a reality but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you been to Chenggu? What were some of your favorite places? And as always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.